What's up, comic and pop culture fans? James with Mint Hunter Comics, and we're talking about big keys and how they are such a wonderful thing, something to aspire to. It is the best feeling in the world when you finally get one. But what is the downside to them? Because there is one. And the downside simply is this. You are now in a market of the one, two, or three percent. Let me know in the comments down below what is a really big book that you have. Maybe it's an outlier in your collection. You have nothing even close to it. That's just sitting, man. You just can't get rid of it. It's too huge. It, it, no one can afford it. As a comic book seller, I can tell you that when people want to spend money, it can be anywhere from just 10 bucks to like maybe a couple hundred, depending if people feel the need to scratch that itch. Occasionally, you have a guy or gal come along that is in the mood, maybe had a great month or whatever, and can drop one or two thousand. But what happens when you have a multi-thousand dollar book, whether you submitted it to CGC, you had an insane luck, or you maybe bought it just outright yourself. What happens when you have a huge key? I'm talking like a five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand dollar book. Now you're in a pocket where you've got something epic that's honestly out of the hands of the average collector and even out of the hands of the experienced collector. I've, I've actually got a perfect example right here. I have the first appearance of Ahsoka Tano. Uh, it is the newsstand copy of a 9.8. I have it listed for $9,000. And this book, the last confirmed sale was thirteen k, $13,000. It was in 2021, so that means not too much. But there was a more recent sale that was like 11000 that had a best offer. So you have to guess it was probably sold for 10000 so I feel like my 9000 makes sense. Here's the problem. And specifically for a book like that, that's wildly niche. You're looking for an extremely specific collector on a book like that. But what about even something more attainable? Something that a lot of people want. What if you had a Ghost Rider number one in a 9.8? Current fair market value is around 12, 13. And I say this because I actually have a lead on that book. That's great. And if I get that, it'll be insane. That'll be the easily the most expensive book I have. But when you go to sell it, you're now in the league where it's almost like you have to take it to heritage auctions, that is, or you have to take it to another auction house. It's tough to find those people that have that specific amount of pocket to swing for a book like that. Now, when you evolve in this hobby, when you make the hobby fund itself, there are many different stages. When you start out doing the dollar bins, and actually, you never really stop doing the dollar bins. It's just so much fun. You start doing your $5 sales. Eventually, you're a full-time seller, you're selling $50, $100 books, and after a while, you've got the mid, you know, $500 big keys, and then after a point, you get to thousands of dollars of books. When you start getting into the higher thousands of dollars of books, by that point, you will have probably met people, like-minded individuals, the basically the 3% of this collecting hobby that can drop $5,000 like it's nothing, that can drop $10,000 like it's nothing, even 20, even 30. And I'm sure you've seen the headlines. There's craziness out there. There's people dropping, you know, millions of dollars on Superman 1 and Detective Comics 27 and other wild what I think are unattainable books. So there are just, there's levels to this, okay? And when you let the hobby fund itself, you will start to get to that point where you will know those guys and gals. You will just, by getting books like that, you put yourself in that position where you're around that circle. I'm sort of around that circle. I know a few guys that do really, really spend. But it can be really tough if you're like an average collector and you happen to have something crazy just off of the top of my head, what if you just happen to have inherited from your grandma or something the first appearance of Solomon Grundy, right? That's going to be, what, $20,000 in crap condition? Like, what do you do with a book like that? You know what I mean? 
So it, it can be a blessing and a curse. It's a wonderful, amazing thing to have such incredible books, but you're really stuck with what you can do for it. Like you, you could try making a post on eBay, on your Instagram, you know, oh boy, uh, giant size X-Men number one, 9.6, $10,000. Anybody want it? And it will probably sit unless you're uh, well connected. So that also says to the importance of the building the hobby organically is once you get there organically and you make contacts and things like that, you are going to know those people. And you're going to maybe be able to do stuff like that. I have made, full disclosure, five and $6,000 sales before. And that happened because I knew guys that wanted very specific big ticket things. I still have never made close to a $10,000 sale, uh, certainly anything over that. Frankly, I, I don't have anything like that, full disclosure. But when I do, because I planned my five-year goal says I'm going to have books like that in a few years. And when I get there, I'm going to hope that I know people that can actually afford that stuff. There's definitely a double-edged sword with books like that. I've got a buddy who's starting to collect, you know, uh, golden age pre-code horror, and I'm starting to get that itch too. And I would love to start collecting pre-code horror, but my God, it's so insanely expensive, and it really is another tier of collecting. But, you know, it, it's a blessing and a curse because when I do need to sell something huge, I'm going to need to sell it for huge money. You can always pop it on eBay for an auction, but I incredibly do not recommend that ever, really. Uh, uh, auction style on eBay is always a Hail Mary. That's when you've had a book for like two years, it's just not selling then you can do an auction, but man, uh, trying to do really big books as an auction style on eBay would not advise. Let me know down in the comments below, what is a book you have that is just too dang expensive for anybody and you're just kind of stuck with it? One of the pros of these huge books, though, I will say is they are a little bit more bulletproof. Every book can be affected. I think we saw one of the most recent sales in a Superman one was lower than anticipated or something like that. For, for the most part, artwork, golden age books, some silver age books, some bronze books remain pretty unaffected by any sort of price drop in the up and down with the market. So when you've got a crazy big key, it is a nice investment block for you, you know? Also, I want to get long past 30,000 subscribers, so make sure to like and comment down below. Be subscribed. The current giveaway for the 30,000 subscribers is the first appearance of Vision. But if we can get there before 2024, I'm going to make it even double awesome. I don't know what it's going to be, but it's going to be another book in that caliber as basically a second place winner. Let's increase the odds here. Let's keep going. Let's have some luck and spread it around with all you fine folks here. Also, don't forget, if you're in the tri-state area to New Jersey, you know, PA, New York, New Jersey, Delaware, try to come visit this Christmas in front of Phantasm Comics in New Hope, Pennsylvania. I'm going to be doing another massive giveaway video. I'm literally letting you guys know already now. I'm going to be giving out money to kids if they can answer questions right to be spent in the comic book shop. So it's going to be an incredible video. If you ever missed the one I did last year, here's the link to that. And we're just going to have an absolute blast with it. I love Christmas time, and it's just going to be the best video. I'm looking forward to it. I've been thinking about it all year. So anyway, guys, I will see you at the next video, and keep on hunting. Make sure to come down to Sentiment Depot Antiques and Collectibles, where I'm set up with all of my comics, located at 238 West Delaware Ave, Pennington, New Jersey. Open every day except for Monday and Tuesday. Enjoy 10% off from Wednesday to Friday. See you there.